Welcome guys today to a new series called F1 Driver Ratings where today I'm going to rate the drivers based on their performances at the Belgian and Italian Grand Prix. And I'll give them a rating out of 10 and explain why they got that rating out of 10. So join me today to find out who did well in these two races and who really did underperform. So if you want to find that out then make sure to check out this video. So let's first start off with the evil empire of Formula 1 Mercedes and their drivers of course Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. Now for Lewis Hamilton, despite at these two races not having the best car, he gave it everything he could to win the race, if not a bit too much. As of course at Monza pushing so hard to get after Charles Leclerc, he did make quite a big mistake. But considering what Lewis Hamilton had to fight against and battle against, I think Lewis Hamilton did do very well and for me gets a 7 out of 10. Valtteri Bottas most of the time was literally the wingman in the fight against Ferrari. But still for me he did do well in Spa, he did okay and then at Monza, once he put on the fresh and medium tyres, he really did take the fight to Ferrari. And if only Valtteri was a top driver, I think he really could have won that race. But he made too many errors when it mattered most. So I'm going to give Valtteri a 6 out of 10. Mostly giving him a 6 because he was still very good despite the errors. And you have to say this partnership, even when they don't have the best car, they still are a very, very good one. And now we move on to Ferrari, who had a very, very fast car at both Spa and Monza. But the number one for Ferrari at both weekends was Monegas driver Charles Leclerc, who in both qualifying sessions really did get the best out of the car, and in the races, I think in fact he outdrove his car. Especially if you take into fact that the Ferrari car, when it comes to race pace, is not exactly good. He did crack under pressure once at the Italian Grand Prix going over the first chicane, but he was still so, so good in getting the victory at both Spa and Monza. And because of how well he drove and how well he defended at times, I'm going to give Charles Leclerc an 8 out of 10. And going forward, he really is now the pride of Italy. But we cannot say the same for Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian Vettel came to Ferrari in 2015 to emulate Michael Schumacher. He is now instead emulating Rubens Barrichello. But saying that, at least Barrichello won the Italian Grand Prix twice. Sebastian can only hope of doing such a thing. As compared to his teammate, he was nowhere near at times the pace of Charles Leclerc and was still making silly errors. And from me, Sebastian Vettel gets a 3. The 3 is only for what he did in Spa in helping Charles Leclerc win. For his performance in Italy, he gets a 0, 1 for choking under pressure and 2 for being an absolute idiot and driving into the middle of a fast chicane. Sebastian is absolutely now on his way to becoming the number 2 driver. The Red Bull, they didn't really do anything at Spa and Monza that was comparable to Hungary or Germany or even Silverstone. Because of course their car pace wise cannot compete at these two races. But the drivers didn't exactly do the best they could at times. For example, Max Verstappen, after having such a great 2019 and last year or so, went back to the bad old Max Verstappen. The one that makes silly mistakes and makes contact with other drivers. We thought in the last year or so that Max had really turned a corner, but at the moment it seems as though Max can't turn a corner when it comes to the start of a Grand Prix as he absolutely contributed to the damage he got at the start at Spa and, of course, the Italian Grand Prix also. His drive in Italy after he came back from the early pit stop was good, but not good enough. Max Verstappen gets a 4. As for Alexander Albon, his first two races at Red Bull have been better for me than Pierre Gasly's first two races as a Red Bull driver. And that is a plus, but it still was not quite where I thought it should be. By his own admission at Spa, he could have drove better in the first stint. And in Italy, he made a couple silly errors that led to him falling down the field in terms of time and not getting after the two Renaults. The two Renaults that he really should have been competing against, especially at the end of the Grand Prix. But considering again that Albert has had, I think, a decent start to his Red Bull career, he gets a 6 out of 10. Despite the last two races not being good for Red Bull, watch out for them in Singapore. They're going to be very, very good. Now it's time to move on to the midfield and first we go to Renault and their two drivers drove very very well at these two races. At Spa we have to remember despite what happened in the race both drivers qualified in 6th and 7th place. 
And let's also remember Ricardo was put on a terrible strategy in the race and Hulkenberg did well to come back into P8. And then in Italy they qualified on the third row of the grid and finished in P4 and P5. Positions where Renault are not used to being in, but positions they should start going for. And because of those two performances, for me, both drivers, Ricardo and Hulkenberg, get a 7 out of 10. Because no matter what their team or anyone else threw at them, they still drove excellently. And that's why they get a 7. Let's hope this continues. The other Renault power team, McLaren, had races where they were looking great, but reliability issues and errors really did get in their way. And both drivers, despite these things happening, drove very well. Carlos Sainz at Spa and Monza was basically cursed, but still drove well, and was still somehow able to keep up some confidence. And Lando also drove very well despite what happened to him, of course losing P5 at the end of the Belgian Grand Prix because of an engine failure. And because both drivers' results were potentially going to be very, very good despite the issues they had, these two drivers both get a 6 out of 10, as again the results could have been a lot better than they actually were. The greatest meme partnership off the circuit is still doing well on track. For Italian, Swiss or Swedish, no matter what they are, Team Alfa Romeo, they didn't have quite the weekends they were hoping for. Coming into these two races, they thought they were going to score some big points. But that, of course, was not to be the case. As first, Kimi Raikkonen had two weekends basically from hell. He did contribute, in my opinion, to his accident at Turn 1 at Spa with Max Verstappen, but then he absolutely was at fault for what he did in qualifying at the Italian Grand Prix. But that doesn't excuse Alfa Romeo somehow starting Raikkonen from the pit lane on the wrong tyres. I'm going to give Kimi Raikkonen a 5. But for me, Antonio Giovinazzi was absolutely the better driver out of the two Alfa drivers in these two races. Even though Giovinazzi, yes, did throw away a points finish at Spa, he drove more consistently than Kimi Raikkonen, which is a big, big surprise. Normally, it's Raikkonen who is getting the best out of the car and being consistent, but it was the other way round. And Antonio capped off two good performances with a points finish at his home Grand Prix in Italy. Antonio gets a 6 out of 10 for his upturn in form. But as a team, Alfa have now got to start getting the results as in the constructors, they're now starting to fall away. Ah yes, next up is Haas, basically the most useless team in the midfield. Because you know no matter what they do on Saturday, it doesn't matter because on Sunday they will not finish in the points. And that was the same once again as for first off Kevin Magnussen drove well but again his car did let him down. But that doesn't excuse him whilst running in the points in Italy, having a massive lockup which basically ended any chance of points before a reliability issue later on. Roman though had a Jekyll and Hyde, Spa and Monza weekend. At Spa, I think Roman did the best he could considering the Haas car was not quick at all. But then at Monza, he had another one of those weekends where he doesn't really do anything good. By qualifying poorly and racing poorly and spinning in the race leading to an early pit stop. And got beat by a Williams. And because of that he gets a 4. Don't expect this team's fortunes to change at Singapore because that track will be even worse. The two Toro Rosso drivers though did drive very well. First off for Daniel Kvyat where he provided two very very good race performances. First off driving from the back of the grid at Spa to P7. And then in Italy, he was on for another great points finish, but then he had a reliability issue, a water leak to be exact. But despite that, he again showed in these two races why he does still deserve, for me, to have a Red Bull drive in 2020. He gets a 7 out of 10. And Pierre, in his first two races back as a Toro Rosso driver, actually looked good. And these performances were better than almost every performance he put in for the Red Bull team as he had a good points finish at Spa and drove well from the back at Monza despite almost getting took out by Lance Stroll. If Pierre had never drove for Red Bull, I'd be saying right now how much he deserves to be in the Red Bull for 2020. Clearly, this is your level. But still, you drove well, so you get a 6 out of 10. It's a shame this team lost P5 in the Constructors, but they are still strong going forward. And I can basically say the same for the two racing point drivers who also drove well considering the pace of their car. 
First off, Sergio Perez, who at Spa did basically the best he could with the car he had. And after the reliability issue he had in qualifying in Italy, he came from the back to finish in P7 and also held off Max Verstappen. And in my opinion, was driver of the day at the Italian Grand Prix, and he gets a 7 out of 10 for these two races. Also, Lance did drive well, not as well as Sergio Perez, but did put in two good performances. At Spa, he drove from near the back to just about sneak a point, even though I don't believe he actually deserved to finish in the top 10. But in Italy, he was so, so good, but so unlucky. As from starting the race in P9, he got ahead of Carlos Sainz at the start and was looking great up until Sebastian Vettel hit him. And even though Stroll, of course, got a penalty deservedly for what he did for Pierre Gasly, Stroll was unlucky. And without Vettel hitting him or Vettel spinning in the first place, I think Lance absolutely finishes in the top 10 in Italy. So Lance gets a 6 out of 10. And I will admit with Lance Stroll, for the first time, I'm actually starting to like him. And you know, when I say that, the world is going mental. And last of all is Williams. Now, Russell for me gets a 6 out of 10 because he actually beat Kimi Raikkonen and Roman Grosjean in Italy. And was not even that far off the points in Italy as well. At the very end of that Grand Prix, was about a pit stop behind. Robert Kubica, though, gets a 5 out of 10 because, well, I didn't really see anything he did. And he gets a 5, really, because of his mental patience with putting up with such a terrible car. But Williams, you don't get a graphic because you are so crap. But also, there are two honourable mentions I must cover before we end this video. One, the drivers who caused that absolute mayhem at the end of qualifying at Monza. Congratulations in making Formula 1 look like a joke. And congratulations to the teams by also making Formula 1 look like a joke. But a big congratulations goes to the Formula 3 drivers for possibly the worst qualifying session of all time. As these drivers were blocking other drivers' laps so hard, the FIA red flagged the session and told them to piss off. You get a special shout out for being so immensely stupid. And also Mavahir Ragunathan scored points in F2. Everyone find a shelter because the end is absolutely coming after that. But guys, thank you for joining me in rating the drivers and how they did at the Belgian and Italian Grand Prix. But let me know in the comments what are your driver ratings for all the drivers from these two races. And also comment down below what you thought of this video and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this as we have a podcast coming out on Saturday at 3pm UK time. And also guys don't forget to smash the like button as well as it really does help out the channel and it really does show me that you want to see this content continue. But until the podcast on Saturday guys it has been me Chazer HD. goodbye.